السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى اليوم الدين أما بعد أهلا وسهلا brothers and sisters uh, you know the rules um, no gergering and no chatting and no giving salam and returning salam during the class please postpone all these lovely conversations until the end of the class barakallahu fikum Second of all, I always uh, recommend for any uh, student of knowledge, whether it is of, of Islamic, uh, Islamic knowledge or worldly knowledge, to always take notes. <clears throat> Handwritten notes are gold, and they will help you memorize and keep track of what you have written and what you have, le- what you have uh, listened to and what you have uh, acquired. So if you have the ability to either print a PDF, print the PDF and then take notes on the actual text, translating certain words, um, you know, commenting, writing certain comments or whatever, that will be absolutely wonderful and better, better beneficial for you, inshallah. Tamam? Right. So let's uh, pick up from where we left off and see what we got in the pipeline today. Uh, we stopped at the statement of uh, Sheikh bin Uthameen, rahimahullah, ثُمَّ اسْتَدَلَّ الْمُؤَلِّفُ لِهَذَيْنِ لِهَذَا التَّرْتِيبِ بِدَلِيلَيْنِ Then the author, may Allah have mercy on him, um, uses an evidence for this arrangement, uh, two, uh, two evidences. الأول قوله كما دلت عليه الآثار وقد سبق, سبق ذكر شيء منها. The first one is as the uh, narrations indicate. And we've already mentioned some of that previously. وَالثَّانِي قَوْلُهُ وَكَمَا أَجْمَعَ الصَّحَابَةُ عَلَى تَقْدِيمِ عُثْمَانِ فِي الْبَيْعَةِ And also the uh, consensus of the Sahaba who gave precedence to Uthman in the pledge that we spoke about earlier. فَصَارَ فِي تَقْدِيمِ عُثْمَانِ عَلَى عَلِيِّ رَضِيَ الْعَنْهُمَا أَثَارْ نَقْلِيَةِ وَفِيهِ أَيْضًا دَلِيلٌ عَقْلِي So now given precedence to Uthman, or giving uh, importance, or uh, th- there's different ways you could put it. Basically, making them more rightful of that position, meaning being after Abu Bakr and then Umar, then Uthman as opposed to Ali first. Um, so the evidence for that is textual evidence. We have textual evidences uh, that is in favor of him, that gives him that preference. وَفِيهِ أَيْضًا دَلِيلٌ عقلي. And we also have an intellectual evidence. وهو إجماع الصحابة على تقديم عثمان في البيع. That is the consensus of the Sahaba in giving preference to Uthman in the pledge. To give him preference to Uthman in the pledge. فإن إجماعهم على ذلك يستلزم أن عثمان أفضل من علي. Their consensus necessitates that Uthman is better than Ali. Their consensus necessitates that Uthman is better than Ali. وهو كذلك the sheikh said and it is it is such لأن الحكمة لأن حكمة الله عز وجل تأبى أن يولى على خير القرون رجلا وفيه من هو أفضل منه الله أكبر pay attention to this very critical point بسم الله because the wisdom of Allah refuses that a person is given rulership upon the best of generations while there is one who is better than him. Allah's wisdom entails that no way there would be a leader who's leading the best of generations as long as there's someone out there who is better than him. As it comes in one report, كَمَا تَكُونُونَ يُوَلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ As you are, as per your condition, then proportionally you will be governed. And what a long pause we can take with this particular report. huh? The people today complain about the Khilafah and the absence of the Khilafah. And the condition of the Muslim lands and some of the uh, progression that is not of an Islamic nature that is taking place and uh, worldwide criticism 
is on non-stop, in non-stop mode, where every day, somewhere, someone has something evil and bad to say about the people in charge. Little do they know that the people in charge are a reflection of us. And that's why we have told the Muslims like in the case of the Palestinian uh, uh, conflict and others, Ya Jama'atul Khair, instead of wasting your energy complaining, whining, and criticizing the people in charge, which is not going to bring about any benefit, it's not going to bring about any change, it's not going to fix the situation. All that you're doing is A, going against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu who strictly and specifically told you not to speak ill about them in public. Secondly, you're uh, endangering your own well-being for nothing, for nothing in return. Thirdly, you will make matters worse for the Muslims. And fourthly, you're gaining sin for backbiting. Ta-da! There you have it. At least four calamities that you've brought upon yourself for nothing. Think about it. When you go against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu some of those outspoken shuyukh who criticized the people in charge and then therefore got imprisoned. And now they're behind bars. Whether rightfully or not rightfully. Besides the point. Besides the point. What did they gain from this? And what did their families gain? Before that, they were giving da'wah, spreading awareness, spreading good among the people. Now they're gone. There's absolutely nothing left. They said what they said in a moment of bravery, and now they didn't get anything out of it. Did anything get better? No, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Let's, let's, let's cut the nonsense. Enough, enough just uh, uh, people just tricking and fooling each other. What did we gain out of this? And what did they get out of this? And what did their families get out of this? Absolutely nothing. I would say, had what they've been doing, had what they've been doing, been in line with the deen of Allah, then I would say more power to you. Yes, even if it's going to entail your imprisonment and your uh, uh, the, the destruction of your worldly life and even your own death, if you're doing this in line with the sunnah, then وَفَّقَكَ Allah, inshallah, you will become among the shuhada. I would say, like any Muslim would say, it's worth it. It's worth it if you're actually fulfilling an Islamic obligation. But the irony of all ironies and the craziness of all craziness is that what you're doing is against the sunnah and then it is bringing about such an a devastating outcome to you and to other people involved in da'wah and you gain absolutely nothing and you've made everything worse. So your bravery is not in line with the way of the Prophet ﷺ. It is not in line and therefore it is blameworthy. Now we don't go to the extent of saying, having this shamata, saying, yeah, you deserve it, that's what you get. That's a little harsh. Some people are this harsh. They say that, that whoever got imprisoned, he brought it upon himself. He should have kept his mouth shut. We say, Allah yahdik. We don't want to have this kind of uh, uh, harshness against the fellow Muslim. At the end of the day, you feel bad and compassionate towards any Muslim in the world. But please understand that those people that run their mouths all day long about the rulers and the people in charge are doing nothing but gaining sin. While their own families are in need or their own families are worthy of the same criticism, if not worse. Their own families may be poor, barely making ends meet, yet they are engaging in the same sinfulness that they're claiming that the people in charge are involved in while they have literally billions and trillions of dollars. You try to have so much money and see how much, mashallah, tabarakallah, you're going to be the sheikh of Zuhad. Not substantiating anything because the wrong is wrong. But a lot of people don't really know how to measure, how to assess those matters. They don't have a grasp 
a proper grasp of the situation. They don't know the difference between the ruler and the ruled. They don't know the difference. They don't understand politics. They take the whole thing from a very narrow-minded, feeble-minded perspective based on the immense ignorance that they're, they're, they're immersed in. And they gain absolutely nothing but evil as a result of their extensively long tongues that don't desist from speaking ill about the people in charge, not knowing that the people in charge are a reflection of our condition. And we've said it many times. Most, the majority of Muslims, if they were to live in a country where they will impose the Islamic law on them, they will be the first people to revolt. And the first po people to protest. And the first people to say, this is too harsh. This is backwards. This is from Stone Age. This is barbaric. The Muslims themselves. Bring the American Muslims. Let the American Muslims be in a situation where the Islamic law is, is being applied. And watch what, what kind of nonsense you will hear. But those same American Muslims and British and Canadian and in the Western world, they, they don't shut up about what's going on in the Muslim countries. They don't shut up. They want the people in charge to be the shuyukh of all the mashayikh and to be strict on everything while they themselves are not strict. Their own families are not strict. Their own communities are immersed in evil and wickedness. How is it that you want Umar ibn al-Khattab as a khalifa, as a person in charge, when you are not even uh, not even a quarter of, a, of a, the toe of a sahabi? Y'all are crazy, يعني? you don't understand time, 1400 years plus since the advent of the Prophet ﷺ. You want today what they had back then, bearing in mind that it wasn't long, only a few generations before the matter of rulership already became a mess. And you want to call for Khilafah today and you want to run your mouths all day. And then you call anyone who doesn't agree with your deviant methodology to be a, a bootlicker or be, to be paid by these people. And you make slanders, you slander Muslims and slander speakers and you have no idea what you're saying. Just lying entirely, the entire time. Lying to yourself, lying to the people. You invent lies and you believe them? That everybody is a bootlicker? Because they, they don't follow your wicked path of takfir? Subhanallah, what world are we living in? Kama takununa alaykum. Just like in the condition in which you are, as you are, you shall be governed accordingly. Today, the Muslims, go for Salatul Fajr. See how many rows you will find in Salatul Fajr. And then see how many you will see in Ramadan. If you really want to know, no, if you really want to know the condition of the Ummah, just look at the Muslims in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. And all of your questions will be answered. This is the condition we're in. We're in a miserable condition. But you want Umar ibn Khattab and Abu Bakr to be the Khalifa. So that when they come upon you with the deen of Allah, you will start complaining and saying, these are harsh, evil leaders. We want someone more gentle and soft. Hypocrisy of the highest order. It's an advice for every Muslim who will hear this. The least you could do when you meet Allah is that you have not said anything evil about other people that are not calling to uh, uh, innovation. You could, you could speak and warn against evil callers to Islam. Minus that, speaking about another Muslim is backbiting. Speaking about the people in charge is backbiting and opposing the way of the Prophet ﷺ who specifically told you not to. At least keep your mouth shut until you meet Allah. You have nothing to lose. Believe me, if you write the biggest post on Facebook, or on Twitter, or anywhere, about how evil it is in this country or that country, wallahi, it's not going to change anything. It, was, it will not change the condition of the situation. It will not change the condition of the people or the situation. All you would have done is gain sin and created drama for yourself that you were better off without. Only intelligent people will take heed.
stupid people, which are abundant, they will say, ah, you're, you're scared. I'm brave. I will continue. Mashi. Mashi, uh, Prince. Continue. But on the last day, you would wish you had taken this advice. Don't say I didn't warn you. فَخَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ لَا يُوَلِّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَّا مَنْ هُوَ خَيْرُهُمْ So the best generations, Allah will not place in charge of them except, except one who is the best of them as well. قوله, his statement, مع أن بعض أهل السنة كانوا قد اختلفوا في عثمان وعلي رضي الله عنهما بعد اتفاقهم على تقديم أبي بكر وعمر أيهما أفضل فقدم قوم عثمان وسكتوا أو ربعوا بعلي The Sheikh said even though some of the people of Sunnah did differ regarding Uthman and Ali may Allah be pleased with them after they had agreed and giving preference to Abu Bakr than Umar they differed about Uthman and Ali أيهما أفضل who is better some of them, فَقَدَّمَ قَوْمِ عُثْمَانِ Some of them gave preference to Uthman and they remained quiet and, 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 and then they gave the preference to Ali in, as the fourth in preference. فَيَقُولُونَ أَبُوْ بَكْرِ ثُمَّ عُمَرْ ثُمَّ عُثْمَانِ وَيَسْكُتُونَ أَوْ يَقُولُونَ ثُمَّ عَلِي Pay attention now. So they would say Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman and then they will be quiet. Or they will say after Uthman, Ali. Meaning they wouldn't mention Ali. Some of them wouldn't mention Ali, رضي الله عنه. قال المؤلف وقدم قوم عليا فقال أبو بكر ثم عمر ثم علي ثم عثمان. And some of them gave preference to Ali. So they said Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Ali, then Uthman. وهذا رأي من أراء أهل السنة. This is an opinion from the opinions of the people of the Sunnah. قال المق قال المؤلف وقوم توقفوا. And the people that held back. فقالوا أبو بكر ثم عمر وتوقفوا أيهما أفضل. They said Abu Bakr and Umar, then they stopped. Regarding who is better, Uthman or Ali, وهذا غير رأي أول. This is other than the first opinion. So we have four opinions. فالأراء أربعة. We have four opinions. Therefore, pay attention to this now. Four views. The first one, الرأي المشهور, the popular one, Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then then Ali. الرأي الثاني, Abu Bakr, ثم عمر, ثم عثمان, ثم السكوت. The second opinion, Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then the remaining silent. الرأي الثالث, the third opinion, Abu Bakr, ثم عمر, ثم عثمان, ثم علي, ثم عثمان, عفوا. Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Ali, then Uthman. And then the fourth view, Abu Bakr, ثم عمر, Abu Bakr, then Umar. ثم نتوقف أيهما أفضل. Then we hold back. We stop regarding who is better, Uthman or Ali. فهم يقولون لا نقول Uthman أفضل. They say we neither say Uthman is better ولا Ali أفضل. Nor do we say that Ali is better. لكن لا نرى أحد أن يتقدم على عثمان وعلي في الفضيلة بعد أبي بكر وعمر. But we don't see that anyone is actually better and is more virtuous than عثمان وعلي after أبو بكر وعمر. قال المؤلف لكن استقر أمر أهل السنة على تقديم عثمان ثم علي. But the 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 most the strongest and the most stable position. Upon, uh, uh, among the people of Sunnah is to give uh, preference to Uthman and then Ali. This is what the Ahl Sunnah have pretty much agreed upon. أفضل, not agreed, يعني they, this is the most stable position. أفضل هذه الأمة بعد نبيها. They said the best of this Ummah after this Prophet, Abu Bakr, ثم عمر, ثم عثمان, ثم علي. على ترتيبهم في الخلفة وهو الصواب كما سبق دليله and that سبق دليله and سبق دليله and this is the correct opinion as it has been mentioned in the evidences previously so this is the popular opinion the sequence that we have mentioned earlier قوله وإن كانت هذه المسألة مسألة عثمان مسألة عثمان وعلي ليست من الأصول التي يضل يضلل المخالف فيها عند جمهور أهل السنة even though this matter, meaning the matter of, of Uthman and Ali, is not one from the fundamentals or from the foundational ones wherein you will uh, declare deviance upon the opposer. So if someone opposes this consent, this, this uh, strong position among Ahl Sunnah as opposed to who is better, Uthman and Ali, it is not a matter that Ahl Sunnah will say, according to the Jumur, the majority of them, they will not say that you've gone outside of the uh, boundaries of Ahl Sunnah. تمام؟ 
يعني المفاضلة بين عثمان وعلي رضي الله عنهما ليست من أصول أهل السنة التي يضلل فيها المخالف so then, المخالف the, the comparison or giving preference to either one of them between Uthman and Ali, may Allah be pleased with them, is not from the foundational principles of Al-Sunnah due to which they will declare someone to be deviant if he opposes. فَمَنْ قَالَ إِنَّ عَلِيًّا أَفْضَلٍ عُثْمَانٍ If he said that Ali is better than Uthman, فَلَا نَقُولْ إِنَّهُ ضَالٍ We don't say he's misguided. بَلْ نَقُولْ هَذَا رَأْيٌ مِنْ أَرَاءِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ We say this is an opinion from the opinion of Ahlul Sunnah. وَلَا نَقُولُ فِي شَيْءٍ We have nothing to say regarding that. قَوْلُهُ لكن, لَكِنْ لَتِي يُضَلَّلُ فِيهَا مَسْأَلَةُ الْخِلَافَةِ uh -huh. The one that you will declare deviance upon is the matter of the khilafa. فَيَجِبُ أَنْ نَقُولُ It is obligatory upon us to say. الْخَلِيفَةُ بَعْدَ نَبِيِّنَا فِي أُمَّتِي أَبُو بَكْر The khalifa after our Prophet ﷺ is Abu Bakr. ثُمَّ عُمَر Then Umar. ثُمَّ عُثْمَان Then Uthman. ثُمَّ Ali And then Ali. And then Ali. حلو. وَمَنْ قَالَ إن الخلافة لعلي دون هؤلاء الثلاثة فهو ضال. And who, whosoever says, whosoever says that the خلافة belongs to Ali without by and that excludes those three, then this person is deviant and misguided. He is deviant and he is misguided. ومن قال إنها لعلي بعد أبي بكر وعمر فهو ضال. Whoever says that it belongs to Ali after Abu Bakr and Umar and he, he is also deviant. لأنه مخالف لإجماع الصحابة رضي الله عنهم because he's opposing the consensus of the Sahaba meaning that person is not saying Ali should, should have been the Khalifa first he's saying no after Abu Bakr and Umar as opposed to Uthman it should have been Ali as a Khalifa we say he's also a misguided person why? because he's opposing the consensus of the Sahaba pay attention we're not talking about now who's better somebody may think Ali is better than Uthman however Uthman was the rightful Khalifa and then Ali, no problem. This is an opinion of Ahl Sunnah. You understand me? It's an opinion of Ahl Sunnah. Someone says Ali should have been the Khalifa before Uthman. He's a misguided person. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْمُؤَلِّفِ That's why the author said وَذَلِكَ أَنَّهُمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ أَنَّ الْخَلِيفَةَ بَعْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَبُو بَكْرٍ ثُمَّ عَمَرٍ ثُمَّ عَثْمَانٍ ثُمَّ عَلِيٍّ Because they believe that the Khalifa after the Prophet ﷺ is Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then Ali. وَهَذَا مَا أَجْمَعَ عَلَيَّ أَهْلُ السُنَّةِ فِي مَسْأَلَةِ الْخِلَافَةِ That is something that Ahl Sunnah have agreed upon concerning the matter of the خلافة. قوله وَمَنْ طَعَنَ فِي خِلَافَةِ أَحَدٍ مِنْ هَؤُلَاءِ الله أكبر <تصفيق> فهو أضل من حمار أهله <تصفيق> And whoever, whoever criticizes the خلافة of any one of those he is more misguided than his his household's donkey. He is more misguided than his household's donkey. Yani the hmar that is outside in the barn. Do the donkeys go in a barn? I don't know where they go in the farm. There you go. The donkey that is outside is actually better guided and more guided than the other hmar who is claiming that they were not, any one of them did not deserve the khilafa, i.e. the Shia and the Rafida. So don't be surprised when we are pretty harsh upon these people because they are, they have gone to the foundation of how this religion was conveyed to us and they criticized it. And they've passed takfir on those noble companions so much so that you cannot really say anything is from the deen anymore because if you cannot trust if you cannot trust Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman may Allah be pleased with them then how in the world did we receive this deen from the Prophet Abu Huraira to them is the most misguided and they curse Abu Huraira and they curse Aisha the, the, the ones who narrated the most ahadith from the Prophet you see the irony and you see the convenience if you're going to criticize Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and then Abu Huraira and Aisha. What are you left with? What religion are you upon? And from where do you get Sahih Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi and Nasai and Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah and Al Bayhaqi? You have nothing left. You have nothing left. So why are the Shia uh, wicked uh, Jews? In the, in, the, in the bodies, in the, in the clothing of, of Muslims. Excuse me. 
It's because of this, because they've gone to the most reliable, trustworthy individuals and they've passed takfir on them. Those crazy maniacs, man. Whoever criticizes the khilaf of any of those, and he says he does not deserve the khilaf, or that he is more worthy than the one who preceded him. He is more misguided than the donkey of his household. And the author used this expression because that is the expression that was used by Imam Ahmad. May Allah be pleased with him. And no doubt he is more misguided than his, uh, the, household, uh, the household's donkey. وإنما ذكر الحمار and the reason why I mentioned the donkey لأنه أبلد الحيوانات على الإطلاق <laughs> he mentioned donkey because it's the dumbest animal of, of all <laughs> like that the, the donkey is, is is considered among the donkey the, the dumbest animals out there so uh, conveniently you want to mention the donkey from among because some animals are actually smart you know like dogs are actually smart cats are smart but stupid at the same time uh, or annoying. Uh, some 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 other animals are pretty intelligent, uh, but the donkey, he is not really all there. He is the least animal. He is the least uh, with uh, uh, of comprehension. He is the least animals with comprehension skills. Because basically criticizing in the khilaf of any of those, or even in the the sequence in which they were uh, uh, given, in, the in which they ruled in, is actually uh, a criticism against the entirety of the companions. فَيَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا أَن نَعْتَقِدَ بِأَنَّ الْخَلِيفَةَ بَعْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو بكر ثم عمر ثم عثمان ثم علي So it is obligatory upon us to have the aqidah that the Khalifa after the Prophet ﷺ was is Abu Bakr and then Umar and then Uthman and then and then Ali. وأنهم في حقية الخلافة على هذا الترتيب and that the rightfulness they had for the Khilaf is in that same order or order. حتى لا نقول إن هناك ظلم في خلافة so that we don't say there's oppression in the Khilaf. كما دعته الرافضة that's as the رافضة the rejectionists claim. حين زعموا أن أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان والصحابة كلهم ظلموا وأن يكلم ذا أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان and all the companions were oppressive لأنهم ظلموا علي بن أبي طالب because they oppressed علي بن أبي طالب حيث اختصبوا الخلافة منه because they uh, unjustly hijacked the خلافة from him ironically the term اختصبوا just so you will be familiar with the Arabic language just in case you come across this in modern day language اختصاب also means rape okay Ikhtisab in modern day language means rape. So how do you know what is intended by ikhtisab when you come across it in any Arabic text? You have to look at the context. You have to look at the context. Obviously, we're not talking about that over here. We're talking about ikhtisab meaning taking something by force because that is what is rape. Rape is basically taking pleasure from a woman by force. A man uh, some nowadays from another man. We don't know who's raping who anymore. Uh, we're living in a zoo technically. And uh, you can hear stories of anything raping anything, and it become it's becoming the norm. But anyways, uh, rape is the idea of of forcing yourself upon someone or or getting something that is not rightfully yours from someone that is not consenting to this particular act. And similarly, uh, the term ikhtisab in its generic meaning is to take something by force. So they basically took the khilafah from Abu Bakr uh, from uh, Ali, according to them. أَمَّا مَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ فَإِنَّنَا لَا نَسْتَطِيعَ أَنْ نَقُولْ إِنَّ كُلَّ خَلِيفَةٍ اسْتَخْلَفَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ فَهُوَ أَحَقُّ بِالْخِلَافَةِ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ uh -huh. As for after them, we cannot say that every khalifa that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed over the people is actually more worthy of the khilafah than others. لِأَنَّ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ لَيْسُ مِنْ خَيْرِ الْقُرُونَ Because whoever came after them are not from the best of generations. بَلْ حَصَلَ فِيهِ مِنَ الظُّلْمِ وَالْإِنْحِرَافِ وَالْفُسُوقِ مَا اسْتَحَقُّ بِهِ أَنْ يُوَلَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَنْ لَيْسَ أَحَقُّ بِالْخِلَافَةِ مِنْهُمْ Rather, so much oppression and deviation and corruption happen among them that they actually deserve to have those who were in charge of them, even though they were people that are more worthy of the khilafah than those people. Again, we're, we're, we're re reiterating and reinforcing the previous, the previous concept. When the people became corrupt and deviant, 
even though they were right, they were more righteous leaders that were available. The people did not deserve those righteous leaders to be in charge. They deserve wicked people like them. Hello? Hello? Anybody there? Look at our condition, y'all. What do you want? Fix. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah does not change the affair of the people until they change what is within themselves. We have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. For ourselves, for our children, for the upcoming generations. Y'all want shortcuts all the time. Ah, why make an effort and why have to do this? Khalas, ya bhai. I just speak ill about the people in charge and do a few protests and revolt and get a few million people killed. No problem. Inshallah, we will be able to remove the current existing, uh, uh, you know, so-called evil leaders. And then what, Habibi? And then what? You're going to be the sheikh? You're going to be the khalifa? You're going to be the leader, the imam? My, another person is going to take over and is going to be, uh, we're going to go back into the same cycle. You can't. The, the unrighteous people will revolt against righteousness. The unrighteous people do not want righteous people in charge. So the problem is within us. It's the hikmah of Allah. Little do you know. Eh, kama qala Allah ta'ala wa kathalika nuwalli ba'da al-zalimina ba'dan bima kanu yaksibun. And thus we do make wrong awliya one to another because of that which they used to earn. They yeah, used to make the khalas. We're all getting, you know, it's 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 like a tennis match between two equal contenders. You're bad, you're playing against someone that's bad. You're good, you're gonna play against someone that's good. Don't complain about your opponent. See where you stand first. Wa'alam. أن الترتيب في الأفضلية على ما سبق لا يعني أن من فضل غيره فإنه يفضل في كل شيء. No, however, that the the preference that we give in the, in the sequence based on what we spoke earlier does not mean that you favor this person. You give him preference in everything. فإنه يفضل في كل شيء. بل قد يكون المفضول فضيلة لا يشارك في أحد. Rather, it could be that the one that is being preferred over has a virtue that no one else has. And the fact that one of them may have a virtue, a particular virtue that distinguishes him from the other three does not now give him the ultimate preference over the others. So we should make a distinction between the general preference and the specific one. There may be things that are more restricted. So it could be that Uthman is better than the other three in a particular virtuous matter. It doesn't make him overall better. Kapish. وَقَوْلُهُ وَيُحِبُّونَ أَهْلَ بَيْتِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَيَتَوَلَّوْنَهُمْ And the statement is that they love the members of the household of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and they take them as allies. أي ومن أصول أهل السنة والجماعة أنهم يحبون آل البيت بسم الله. That got called quickly. From the foundational principles of أهل السنة والجماعة is that they love the members of the household of the Prophet عليه السلام. يحبون آل بيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يحبونهم لأمرين. They love him for two matters, for two reasons. للإيمان first because of their iman. وللقرابة من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا يكرهونهم أبدا and because of their uh, relationship their relation with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم meaning they're the relatives of the Prophet عليه وسلم and they never ever ever desist them they never hate them they never hate them حلو ولكن لا يقولون كما قال الرافضة but they don't say like the رافضة said كل من أحب أبا بكر وعمر فقد أبغض عليا whoever loves أبو بكر وعمر he has automatically hated علي وعلى هذا فلا يمكن أن نحب عليا حتى نبغض أبو بكر وعمر accordingly according to them now we cannot love علي until we hate أبو بكر وعمر وكأن أبو بكر وعمر أعداء لعلي بن أبي طالب it's as though أبو بكر وعمر are the enemies of علي بن أبي طالب مع أنه قد تواتر النقل عن علي رضي الله عنه أنه كان يثني عليه مع المنبر even though we have متواتر أحاديث 
and, and narrations and reports that Ali used to praise them on the member. فَنَحْنُ نَقُولُ We say, إِنَّا نَنُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ We make Allah bear witness. We, we ask Allah to testify. عَلَى مَحَبَّةِ آلِ بَيْتِ الرَّسُولَ سَلَامِ Regarding our love to the members of the household of the Prophet ﷺ وَقَرَبَتِ and his kinship. نُحِبُّهُمْ لِمَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ We love them because of our love for Allah and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Uh, نعم. ومن أهل بيته أزواجه بنص القرآن. And when we speak about the household of the Prophet وسلم, then we are also speaking about his wives according to the explicit evidence from the Quran. Wherein Allah عز وجل says, يا أيها النبي قل لأزواجك إن كنت قل لأزواجك إن كنتن تردن الحياة الدنيا وزينتها فتعالينا أمتعكن وأسرحكن سراحا جميلة. وَإِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَدَّ لِلْمُحْسِنَاتِ مِنْ كُنَّ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا يا نساء النبي من يأتي من كن بفاحشة مبينة يضاعف لها العذاب ضعفين وكان ذلك على الله يسيرا ومن يقلت من كن لله ورسوله وتعمل صالحا نؤتيها أجرها مرتين وأعتدنا لها رزقا كريما يا نساء النبي لستن كأحد من النساء إن اتقيتن فلا تخضعن بالقول فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض وقلن قولا معروفا وقرن في بيوتكن ولا تبرجن تبرج الجاهلية الأولى وأقمن الصلاة وآتينا الزكاة وأطعن الله ورسوله إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا It's a long ayah but you need to listen to it O oh, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Say to your wives if you desire the life of this world and its glitter, then come. I will make a provision for you and set you free in a handsome manner. But if you desire Allah and his messenger and the home of the hereafter, then verily Allah is prepared for the doers of good among you an enormous reward. O wives of the Prophet, whomever of you commits fahisha, the torment for her will be doubled. And that is very easy for Allah. And whoever of you is obedient to Allah and his messenger and does righteous good deeds, we shall give her her reward twice over. And we have prepared for her generous provisions. O wives of the Prophet, you are not like any other women. If you have taqwa, then be not soft in speech, lest he in whose heart is disease should be moved with desire. But speak in an honorable manner. And stay in your houses and do not display yourselves like that of the times of ignorance and perform salah and give the zakah and obey Allah and his messenger. Allah wants only to remove... From you, uh, al, al, evil deeds and sins from you, O members of the household, and purify you with a thorough purification. هنا, so the household of the Prophet Sallam, the members of the house of the Prophet Sallam, يدخل فيها, included in that, أزواج الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام بلا ريب, the wives of the Prophet Sallam without a doubt, because it's in the ayah. وكذلك يدخل فيه قربتها, also included in that will be his relatives or his kinship. فاطمة وعلي والحسن والحسين وغيرهم كالعباس بن عبد المطلب وأبنائه. So included with فاطمة and Ali and Hassan Hussein and the Abbas, the son of Abdul Muttalib and his children. فنحن نحبهم لقرابتهم الرسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام. We love them because of their kinship with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم because of their relation with the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. ولإيمانهم بالله and because they believed in Allah. Why? Because we have some of them who didn't right here. فإن كفروا فإننا نحبهم. If they disbelieve, we will not love them. وَلَوْ كَانُوا مِنْ أَقَارِبِ رَسُولَ السلام, Even if they were the relatives, the closest relatives of the Prophet ﷺ. فَأَبُوْ لَهَبْ عَمْرُ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْهِ السلام. أَبُوْ لَهَبْ is the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. لَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ نُحِبَّهُ بِأَيَّ حَمْنَ حَوَلْ It is not permissible to love him under any condition. بَلْ يَجِبُ أَنْ نَكْرَاهُ لِكُفْرِ Rather, it is, it is obligatory to hate him for his disbelief. وَلِإِذَائِهِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهِ لكن نحب أفعاله التي أزدها إلى الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. We appreciate the actions that he did towards the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم من الحماية والذبع when he protected him and he defended him. Uh, نعم. قال المؤلف ويتولونهم أي يزعلونهم من أوليائهم. So they they ally with them, meaning they make them their allies. والولي يطلق على عدة معان. The term wali is given to multiple meanings. يطلق على الصديق. It is given to the friend, والقريب, and the relative, والمتولي الأمر, and the one in charge. وغير ذلك من الموالات والنصر. And other examples of uh, uh, 
basically Nusra when you give victory and aid and support another group of people or another person. Here it includes all of them, meaning aiding uh, uh, and friendship and love. Hello. قَوْلُوا وَيَحْفَظُونَ فِيهِ مُصِيَّةَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ حَيْثُ قَالَ يَوْمَ غُدَيْرِ خَمْ أُذَكِّرُكُمُ اللَّهَ فِي أَهْلِ بَيْتِي uh -huh. Very important. And they keep track. They remember. They preserve. They protect the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who said on the day, the day of غدير خم on that day he said عليه وسلم I remind you on the day of Ghadir Khum, the Prophet said, I remind, you, I remind you concerning Allah, concerning the members of my household. Meaning, be mindful of Allah when it comes to the members of my household. I'm reminding you of Allah when it comes to the members of my household. They, they take that reminder from the Prophet Wasallam. They give it its, uh, uh, its due appreciation and respect. Hello? Uh, where was I? Now. Wasiyyat Rasulullah Sallam ay So what is the wasiyyah? It's the covenant basically that the Prophet Sallam or the advice which Prophet Sallam gave to his uh, his ummah. To his ummah. That day we spoke about earlier right now is the 18th day of Dhul Hijjah. وهذا الغدير ينسب إلى رجل يسمى خم and that غدير is, is named after a man called خم وهو في الطريق الذي بين مكة والمدينة it is on a path between مكة and مدينة قريب من الجحفة close on area called جحفة those who live in Saudi they know these places نزل الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فيه منزلا في رجوع من حجة الوداع the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he stayed there for a little bit on his way back from the farewell pilgrimage عليه الصلاة والسلام وخطب الناس and he gave uh, uh, admonishment to the people he gave a khutbah to the people وقال أذكركم الله في أهل بيتي I remind you of Allah concerning the members of my household ثلاثة and he said that three times صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني أذكر الله meaning remember Allah أذكر خوفه remember Allah's uh, meaning be, be, be mindful of Allah meaning fear him وانتقامه and be careful of Allah's revenge إن أضعتم حق أهل البيت if you are wasteful or neglectful regarding the right of the members of the household وَذْكُرُوا رَحْمَةُ وَثَوَابُ إِنْ قُمْتُمْ فِي حَقِّهِمْ And then remember the mercy of Allah and His reward if you actually fulfill the right of these uh, Sahaba. So the day of Ghadir Khum is named after a location and the name of a person in which the Prophet ﷺ gave this particular reminder to the Sahaba. And I think we can stop now so that we can begin on page, uh, the other page. A. Yell. We don't have much time for the Q&A, so that's, that's enough for now. Okay. Is seeking barakah from the things that weren't prescribed in Sharia major shirk, such as graves of so-called awliya or the grave of the Prophet? Uh, yes, it could be. It depends on what the person believes. If the person believes that it's Allah Azza wa Jal who's making those things uh, a source of blessing, depending on what it is, you need to be more explicit, then it could be a type of, of minor shirk. If they believe that these things independently stand alone, they are the ones who give barakah or they protect or they do good, then this is major shirk. That would be major shirk. Naam. Ustad, are you going to make a video on the Diobani's attack in Salafis on YouTube? Yeah, Sheikh. I don't know if I am. I don't think so. Who cares about the Diobani's anyways? Well, yeah, we should care because they are pretty crazy and there are a lot of them. Maybe. But, you know, it's it's a lot of work. We'll see, inshallah. We'll see. Uh, I texted you on WhatsApp and asked you to answer a question here. Barakallah Feek, Ustad. It was about Majaz and the Quran with examples of brother like Saeed Kamali. Example Tabbati. I, I don't understand... I probably didn't uh, listen to the message. I'm getting way too many messages from way too many people. It's becoming overwhelming. So I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, Why has Brother Hajji produced a series of videos specifically attacking Muhammad Abdul Wahab? Because uh, Brother Hajji has uh, psychological problems. 
because he's a, he's deviant, he's misguided, he's full of himself, he's confused, and he's ignorant, and a lot more uh, a lot more uh, in terms of qualities. But you know, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide him. Why is my monitor about to turn off? Yeah, so uh, we ask Allah to guide him. I mean, I know this was pretty straight in your face, but that's how I that's how I feel about this individual. This individual is not in a position to have a YouTube channel. Maybe, maybe a cooking channel on YouTube. That's fine. A cooking channel where he makes some some of his local dishes and he shows us how to eat them. You know, maybe put a little bit of. Uh, funny things in the background bring some of these other funny people that he knows uh and you know where they they begin the video with him you know out there mixing food and then you know more of him mixing food just, you know in the beginning and the end yeah, just to make it a little more spicy that would be i would subscribe i would subscribe to that channel i'm not backbiting habibi oh i just said early in the class yeah uzru that uh when it comes to uh deviant Misguided people, there's no backbiting. I'm warning against him so that you will know who you're dealing with. That's his qualifications. His qualification is not to be speaking about Islam. Uh, if you don't like it, Habibi, go subscribe to his channel and unsubscribe from this one. I'm not here to make you happy. Yalla. Uh, long time. It's Binyamin. How you been? Binyamin, how you been? Ahlan Binyamin. Quran recitation edits. Okay. We've been good, alhamdulillah. Hayakallah, Sheikh. Next. Kamustaka uh, Ustad. Off. My question is, is it permissible to wear a camouflage color? It's probably my favorite color. It's probably my favorite color. Why is it not permissible to wear a camouflage color? What's wrong with it? Mashi ya uzru. Zakallah khair for the advice. Barakallah feek. Much better. Uh, it's recommended to hide the sins of your brother sister. Then what happens to the hat punishment? For example, if he or she commits zina or does major sins, what to do? It depends on the context. It depends on the context. Of course, you want to hide the sins of others. But if it's a situation where others are going to be oppressed or you're called for uh, testimony, then you have to bear witness to the truth. You have to bear witness to the truth. Now. You don't go out of your way to expose people's sins. Tamam. Someone took qasam by Allah to never do a particular sin ever again in his whole life. But then the person fell into the sin multiple times. So how many expiations needed? The scholars differ. Some of them say uh, an expiation is required for every time he violated. And some of them say it's only one expiation. Now, there's a detailed fatwa on Islam QA that will break it down for you. I suggest that you read it about oaths. And, uh, and things of this nature. Now, thank you, Pedro. I feel honored. I have some books which contains the answer to school books. It contains some statements of kufr. Is it permissible to sell it? Uh, who you sell? I, I don't know. That's a technical question. I don't know. You, I mean, probably, I don't know. You need a fatwa. I don't know. Time next. What if you're forced to go to public school with free mixing, and if you don't go, the police will come to your home, take you away from your family because they think you're being abused. Then you go. Then you go and you fear Allah as much as you can. Will a Muslim who has a mustard seed amount of kibble arrogance in the heart never enter paradise? No. He will not enter paradise among those who will enter paradise without punishment. Every Muslim who dies upon Islam will eventually enter Jannah. Every Muslim who dies upon Islam will eventually enter Jannah. Those narrations mean they are deprived of accessibility to, the, to Jannah from the get-go. They don't get to go to Jannah free of punishment. They will be punished accordingly, then they will be admitted to Jannah at some point. After they've been cleansed from their sins or whenever Allah Azza wa Jal wills. Naam. What's going on here? How to give da'wah to family members who are affected by Qutbi and Maududi thought. And how to refute their claim that there's no Islamic state on earth and their anti-Arab sentiments. Wallahi, it's a, 
محمد علي يعني ذا نيدز محمد علي افورت رايت وانا انفايت ذيم تو ليف ذا سوفي ديفيشن ذي سي تو مي سعودي بروباغندا اي جيف ام حديث فروم صحيحين ذي ستيل دونت يا اخي اتس ذا تشالنج ذات وي ار اول جوينغ ثرو ذيس از ذا تشالنج ذات وي ار اول جوينغ ثرو رايت ناو اتس نوت ايزي اند ات تيكس ا لوت اوف بيشنس بيرسيفيرنس اند نوليدج فور يو تو بي ايبل تو get the job done you just need to learn i cannot it's not a, there's no shortcut to this what's going on why are there people questioning you ababa i mean using pen makes ink marks on hands will it invalidate wudu can one pray sunnah sitting without any health issue um well if the if the ink marks are not going to allow water to touch the skin which i don't believe is the case then there's there's nothing wrong you should try to get rid of it but i don't think as far as i know it does not invalidate the wudu because you could still the water is still accessing your skin the ink is on the skin it's not covering the skin per se where it's a layer above it uh can one pray sunnah sitting without any health issues yeah you can you can but it's not recommended if you're healthy pray standing What's going on here? Does the prohibition? Yeah, Jamaa, I don't, I don't uh, uh, type and reply to people. It's a family project. I speak. Musab is right now the moderator per se. He's the one who shows the questions and he's the one who answer you. I don't know what's all this confusion about. I can only do one thing at a time when it comes to these issues. Now, does the prohibition of cursing time also apply to all other things that are under the command of the Creator, Allah, such as natural disasters and calamities? Yes. It's best that you avoid that, even though there are evidences, um, you know, that Yawm uh, Asib, uh, and there's certain expressions which appear in the Quran that speak about that. But yeah, you you anything that comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you you don't want to curse it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Please advise us to get to know the manhaj of someone. Or an imam who leads salah in a subtle manner. I think it's not appropriate to ask directly. Exactly what you meant. You're right. It is not appropriate to ask directly. Then you just have a conversation with this person. Invite him to a cup of tea uh, or a cup of coffee uh, and, and talk to him about it. Say, you know, if can you explain to me, uh, you know, the deen? I need, this, basically, come to them as though you're someone who wants to learn. As a student. And when they teach you, You can ask, insert certain questions that will pretty much, you'll be able to know. It's easy, inshallah. Is leaving one prayer kufr or more? Uh, and do we need to take the shahada again or do ghusul? According to uh, Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah, and others, yes, leaving a single salah uh, uh, is tantamount to kufr. And therefore, you do need to give the shahada again. As for the ghusul, it is, it is a, a recommended act. It's not obligatory. Now, is it worse to vote for Hindu prime minister or a female Christian prime minister? And if voting is haram, then generally which is worse? It's best that you don't vote at all. I am of the opinion that you avoid voting altogether. Don't get involved in a law that Allah Azza wa Jal did not reveal. Don't be part of that process. So my uh, advice to you is don't vote at all. Should we raise the hands for sujood tilawa? And what is the sunnah? Should we raise the hands for sujood at tilawa? Yes. Naam. Naam. You raise your hand and then you go into sujood. You do takbir and you go into sujood. Next. Chocolate like Tim Tam. Again with this Tim Tam? They have tiny amount of alcohol and bugs. Oh! As preserv pre preservative in it? Bugs? What type of bugs, man? Ew. Anyways, I'm of the opinion that a little bit of alcohol uh, within certain products does not make it haram. I'm of the opinion, and I, I follow the opinion of my uh, ustad and my sheikh, 
uh, Abu Mujahid, that's the position he held, and that's the position I'm convinced with. Because if if there was this tiny amount, something point something percent, you will not be able to get drunk. You will die from eating so many chocolates before the uh, level of alcohol will even affect you. You will die from chocolatey uh, uh, indulgence. So yeah, it, it's not haram. As for the bugs, Allahu Akbar. I don't know what type of bugs. No, I mean, you know, hey. How do you invite someone who don't even know what is their own aqidah to the way of the salaf? How to even start to invite them if they're not mahram? Not mahram, well, first by finding them someone else. Find them someone of the same gender. That is ideal that you find someone of the same gender. You don't want to be communicating with the woman because usually those da'wah uh, efforts end up with a love story. Most of these da'wah efforts end up with a love story because you taught her the deen and you know you showed her Islam and you were the guide and you are the one and and then you know yeah find someone else to do the job man women be crazy and men would be crazy too next Can you explain Sheikh Islam and Taymiyyah's fatwa against the Mongols? Many takfiris use that as a proof. If one doesn't rule according to the Sharia, the blood is halal to spill. Uh, you need to be more specific. Which fatwa are you referring to specifically? Um, and yes, a scholar can pass takfir. The scholars can pass takfir on rulers if they are the uh, uh, you know reliable trustworthy scholars and in this case uh, it is up to them to make that judgment provided that they're able to do something against them so whatever happened at time of Mutaimiya with the mongols cannot be applied to today because you know how it is you can't you can't bring a fatwa from what Sheikh al-islam did with the leader of the mongols and come say that this applies to this fulan with this thing over here and you think you have the same abilities and and strength to, to remove and put and do all that. Come on, man. These were different times. You need scholars. These matters require scholars. Don't, don't insert yourself into the hole of a lizard and get trapped when it's not your domain. It is not your domain. There are people for that. There are scholars for that. Allah will hold them accountable if they are deceiving us and they are tricking us. It's not on you and me to figure that one out. That's just advanced. You know your limits, bro. Next, yalla, yalla, I have only a couple of minutes left. Is no watching anime is not okay. I am yet to find a single halal anime. Really, they might be out there, but generally speaking, how are you gonna avoid music and women in the anime? Allahu Akbar. Now, I'm currently in Turkey. And I saw Tahir White over here and he told me that not every other sect besides Ahl-Sunnah such as Diyaban is even because of Nawawi and Al-Hajar being Ash'ari. Yeah, not every other sect besides. What about them? Uh, well, that's crazy. If you, <laughs> He's saying that they're Ahl-Sunnah, yani, Diyabandis, and others are, are not deviant because of Ibn Hajar and Nawawi. They were being Ash'ari. They weren't Ash'ari, by the way. They had some Ash'ari traits, but they were not Ash'ari. Wow. Tahir, why told you this in Turkey? I don't know, Adnan. That's crazy, bro. I thought he was in the States. But, you know, hey, why would you, why would you come up with that? You should uh, have evidence for that. Uh, in my country, Bahrain, most schools have free mixing. What should I do? I'm already in school where there's free mixing. What should I do? Well, I don't know what you should do because it depends on your condition with your parents and your family and what, what can you do? Do you have alternatives? Do you have alternatives? If you have alternatives, then go for these alternatives. If you don't have alternatives, then sometimes there's so much you can do. If you're forced to go there, you just have to fear Allah as much as you can. Uh, which istighfar is best for tasbih? What do you mean istighfar is best for tasbih? Say you do istighfar. 
اللهم انت ربي خلقتني وانا عبدك وانا على عهدك وعدك ما استطعت اعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت ابوء لك بنعمتك علي وابوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فانه لا يغفر الذنوب الا انت ذات از ذا بيست استغفار نعم نو وات از ذا ساوند كم اون مان يلا لاست كويشن Next, is it okay to share someone that's not bad? I YouTube video helping with homework, but it was he has, but it has non mahram. No, it's not. If it's a woman, you're sharing a woman. No, it's not okay. You can tell the person, oh, you give a disclaimer. Say, look, I'm gonna send a video that has something beneficial. Don't look at the woman. Okay, don't look at the woman. If it has music, say mute it. You have to tell the people. You have to guide the people and give them disclaimers when you are forced to share something. That might have haram in it, but there's also a benefit in it for, for whatever reason and there's no alternatives. Meaning that video will help that person in their school, in their studies. Share it with them, but give them all the disclaimers so that they can act accordingly. Okay? Tayyip, khalas. No, no, sorry. Too late. I got a bounce. Zakum uh, khairan. Ma'alish. What? Which one? It was haram for the Sahaba to write down the Quran and put it together because Muhammad never ordered the Quran to be made into a physical book. How do I respond to this, A.K. brother? What? Uh, it was haram for the Sahaba to write down the Quran. It wasn't haram for the Sahaba to write down the Quran. The Prophet the Prophet actually told the Sahaba to write down the Quran, and he used to write it down in the time of the Prophet Ali um, And no one said that he never ordered it to be made into a physical book either, because it wasn't complete. Uh, when he was still alive, والسلام, it only became complete after he died. So naturally, it can only become a physical book after he dies. What if another ayah was revealed? If they made it to a book, another ayah was revealed. Where are they going to insert it? Even today, you can't do that in a book. You think you could have done that back then? No. So uh, it's based on some uh, misinformation that someone gave you, unfortunately. All right? Okay. If you all have more questions, then catch us next week during the tafsir class. Zakum khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa